The next reflex I want to talk to you about is the asymmetrical tonic neck reflex. We call it the ATNR for short. The next reflex I want to talk to you about is the asymmetrical tonic neck reflex. I consider this reflex to be the whopper of all reflexes because how debilitating it can be for a child. This reflex is responsible for the cross patterning movements that a child learns to do. Now cross patterning is so important for so many reasons, but mostly because it has to do with how the brain communicates. We have what's called a vertical midline. It's an imaginary line that runs down the center of our body from the top of our head all the way down to our toes. The problem is, is that if we cannot cross our vertical midline, it causes real grief for a child. Even though it's an imaginary line, it becomes like an absolute wall or barrier to a child that cannot cross over it. So let me explain a little bit about what I mean. When we need to understand our world around us, we need to be able to take information both into our left and right side of our brain and share it across both sides. We need both sides in order for it to make sense. The other reason it's important to be able to cross our vertical midline is because a lot of the things that we need to do to learn require that. So when you're reading, you need your eyes to be able to track across a page from one side to the other. It needs to be able to cross your midline. When you write, you need to be able to take your arm across your page from one side to the other. If you are unable to cross your midline, even though it's imaginary, it causes your body to stop there or to skip or jump there. So quite often kids that have a ATNR reflex that is still active, you can tell simply by how their eyes track. You will have children that will try and track across a page and the minute they come to the midline, their eyes will stop and then skip to here. So if you're watching their eye move, you will see it smoothly move to a point where it's almost at the middle and then it will jump or have this rapid movement to one spot and then carry on. For a child that's reading, that causes them to lose their place every single time they come to the midline, which means that their eyes are jumping all over the page and reading for them is not fluid, which means comprehension for them is not fluid. It makes reading very laborious for them and they don't understand what they read. Almost all kids that are dyslexic have a retained ATNR reflex. Their barrier or wall is slightly different in that it acts more like a mirror. So this is why we see letter reversals for kids that are dyslexic. They have a hard time understanding right from left. They have a hard time understanding their spatial orientation. So the ATNR is really, really important to integrate. So the other thing that is often a very big indication of an ATNR reflex being retained is in their behavior or in their social interactions. As we get into the next set of videos where we talk about brain hemisphere integration, you will better understand how the ATNR plays a part in that. But briefly, what I want to explain to you is that if a child is predominantly only using one side of their brain, if it's the left side of their brain, they are going to live predominantly with those characteristics. So let's say, for example, the left side of the brain is a very linear and analytical side of the brain. It is concerned with details. These can be the kids that are obsessed with a particular subject. These are the kids that will sit and do Lego for hours without any social interaction. These are also the kids that have a very hard time understanding social interaction because the right side of the brain is the side of the brain that does facial recognition. They understand social cues. So if the left, they're predominant living in the left side of their brain, they don't understand these social graces that they need to make friends and to get along in the world. Now the other side of that is you may have a child that's living predominantly in the right side of the brain. Now the right side of the brain is what we consider stereotypically to be the creative side of the brain. It's very the big picture, very easygoing, loose flowing side of the brain. 
The problem with that, if you're only living in the right side of your brain, is you have very little structure. The truth of the matter is, in order to function well in school and well in life, we need to have a well-balanced brain. In order for that to happen, the brain needs to be able to communicate freely with both sides of the brain. Once the ATNR is integrated, we see huge changes for a child. Everything just starts to click. They start to get it. Life just becomes easier for them. So I strongly encourage you to come over to the website and check out how to test if your child still has this reflex active and then follow through with the exercises for the next 30 or 90 days so that they can overcome this.